Uh, yes, there probably were aftershocks on March 27, uh, 2010 in Chile, uh, but this presentation is primarily about the big earthquake that occurred on February 27th. Uh, apologies for starting out with a typographic error on the first and not the second slide. Thank goodness. Uh, welcome uh, to this uh, briefing, um, sponsored, uh, as indicated, by Professor Mayen. Uh, the uh, earthquake, uh, which occurred in uh, local time 3.34 in the morning, uh, 27th of February uh, 2010, uh, affected a very large region, region of uh, Chile and uh, also uh, shook surrounding countries uh, uh, to a lesser extent. Uh, the uh, moment magnitude uh, came in at 8.8 .8, uh, for this earthquake. Uh, I was sitting at home um, looking at some emails about my son who's in Santiago uh, when mails came in, and I said, no, it can't be an 8.8, .8. uh, but indeed it was. Uh, according to USGS, this is now officially ranked as the fifth uh, most energetic, uh, strongest earthquake uh, in uh, recorded history uh, in, in the world. Um, the fault rupture area was 100 kilometers by 500 kilometers, roughly. Uh, the population affected was more than 8 million people. Uh, the number of confirmed deaths varies by what uh, source one goes to. Uh, I went to the USAID uh, site a couple days ago where they have 452 confirmed deaths. Uh, the ministry that's officially responsible lists uh, under 400. Uh, some places list as high as 800, but there uh, have been some errors in reporting, uh, as, uh, especially as the government changed hands uh, in the middle of the aftermath of this uh, earthquake. Uh, the uh, number of homeless is uh, greater than 800,000, and $30 billion of uh, direct losses are anticipated. Uh, to get a sense of the scale, uh, the uh, earthquake uh, epicenter was located about here. Uh, Santiago, located up here, is about uh, 300 kilometers to the north. Uh, the shaken region included uh, many large cities, including Santiago, uh, toward the coast, uh, Val Valparaiso, and Viña del Mar, uh, coming down uh, Talca, Chillán, Concepcion, uh, Temuco, and, and many other smaller cities in between. A truly a vast uh, area that was affected by this earthquake. Uh, there were tsunami uh, created by this event uh, with uh, devastating impacts. Uh, some of the largest uh, were uh, recorded, of course, close to the epicentral region and uh, really uh, wiped out some small towns and, and very seriously affected uh, some of the industry in that region as well. Uh, the ground shaking uh, was long and in some locations very strong. Uh, if we go to the uh, town of Carrico, which is about halfway from the epicenter towards Santiago, uh, one record that was recorded by uh, an instrument from the University of Chile uh, has the tracing shown here. Uh, the university had uh, its reported its best instruments up north where the uh, rupture was really most likely uh, to occur, uh, although there was still a, a likelihood of a, a rupture in this area with large magnitude. Uh, and so the, the university had placed some of its older instruments primarily uh, in this zone, uh, but sufficient to capture some of the uh, elements of the ground shaking. And we can see here uh, in, in this region, uh, peak ground accelerations uh, up near a half G, uh, strong shaking lasting on the order of two minutes. Uh, so it was quite a, a shaking event, I'm told, by folks who experienced it. Uh, some of the elastic response spectra that show uh, the uh, response of a single degree of freedom oscillator as a function of vibration period uh, compared with the building code. The uh, building code is shown in black here for this site and uh, the recorded or computed spectra from the motions are shown by the green and the blue. And so at this site, we had uh, spectral ordinates that were on the order of uh, what the design response spectrum was. In, uh, in fact, most uh, period ranges in this location exceeded what the response spectral ordinates were for design. Uh, one peculiarity reported by uh, several of the instruments was that in the period range from about one to one and a half or two seconds, there was a, a seemingly a burst of energy. And this struck many of the uh, mid-rise reinforced concrete buildings particularly hard. Uh, and we'll see some of that in, in some of the responses in the concrete buildings as we get along uh, in the program today. Uh, if you've uh, looked at the, uh, the news uh, footage, if you've gone online and look at the uh, 
uh, AP photos and others, you see things of this type, uh, small towns ruined, uh, likely to be uh, bulldozed and replaced. Uh, highways uh, wrecked, one example here, and we'll hear more about the highway situation from Mark Yashinsky momentarily. Uh, a concrete building uh, totally on its side. I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we think happened to this building and, and what were some of the underlying features that, that resulted in this later. And of course, tsunami effects, which were really devastating. Uh, it, it's uh, shocking to be in an area that has been inundated by tsunami. Uh, just the debris, uh, the uh, smell of decaying fish and the like is, is really quite oppressive and uh, ruined uh, many places. Uh, it was such a big earthquake that EERI put together a very large team. Uh, I had the uh, fortune to work with two colleagues in Chile, uh, Rafael Riddle from the uh, Catholic University and Ruben Borischeck from the University of Chile uh, to organize a team. I'm not going to spend the time to list all the members uh, who are shown here, but uh, we covered uh, reinforced concrete buildings as a predominant type of building there. Uh, some masonry, some steel and industrial facilities, uh, a non-structural focus as well as some instrumentation activities. Uh, there was a focus on bridges, uh, hospitals, and health. We'll hear about both of those today. Social science aspects we're not going to focus on today, uh, neither tsunami effects. Uh, we'll, we'll hear from geotechnical engineers about uh, what their main observations were. Uh, the on-site support from professors and from students in Chile was outstanding. And we can only hope that uh, when uh, we're struck with such a similar event, uh, when it happens, that we'll be able to be as generous with our time and our knowledge uh, as they were. With that, uh, we're going to uh, turn the program over to Keith Kelson. Uh, we're going to cover today only a part of the whole program uh, because we only have a limited time. Uh, we're doing this very quickly, shortly after the, uh, the event. And so we're going to try quickly to cover the geology, coastal uplift active, uh, aspects, geotechnical engineering, highways and bridges, buildings, hospitals, and perhaps a university, some closing remarks, and we hope we have time for questions. In subsequent uh, briefings, we hope we can cover some of the other topics in more depth. With that, I'll introduce Keith Kelson.